And I got my line in with the tracer. I just backfilled it a little bit here. I left about eight feet out from uh, the hole here, just so I got some flexibility for doing the, um, the riser. So I can pull it out of the ground, but I just backfilled it to weigh it down. And uh, I gotta eventually sneak in there. I backfilled a little bit on the other side. I just gotta get in there, but I'm not gonna do that today because it's just wet and miserable. Um, so just to show you, here's just a mock-up of the riser. And do not bury above this mark. So that's a great depth that I have. And I got the plastic bag there over the coupler. So come the next day on both sides, like I said, because I left eight feet, I'm gonna pull this out of the ground, mark my, well, before I do that, I'll mark my spot where I want it to be. I'll do my uh, connection, put it back in on both ends, and then I will backfill. And that'll be that job done. And then I just have to get a gas fitter to come in and he's going to um, hook it up to my meter base here and he'll tag it and it'll be certified. So, Enough of that crap for today. Okay, here's the other side. Peek it through there. There's my next project, my fence that's almost falling over. I got the brace there for it. So we snake along here and we come out here to our pool building. And this was the hole where um, the uh, propane uh, line originally went in. And I had my propane tank sit right here and then I had a hard copper line with a regulator feed into here, but I got sick and tired of having to take tanks and wheel them around front and uh, fill them up every two weeks. It was just such a pain. So anyways, I had to do a lot of digging. Got some water in there. Uh, both ends will be capped. I got to dig this out a little more for the riser to go up to here. So I got to do a little bit more digging, but... This probably took about eight hours of digging, no kidding. There's a lot of roots in here. And before anybody says, well, why didn't you just get a ditch witch trenching machine? Um, the big thing was I couldn't, there, I don't even know if there was one small enough to fit uh, between there. And when I looked into it, they were about $200 to rent for like half a day. And uh, they were very hard to get. There was no allocation. So I wanted to get it done. And I figured, hey, I'll save that money I'll break my back and I'll save that money and I will put that money towards another uh, tool to uh, show you guys another how-to video so there you go it's win-win for both of us so anyways I'm gonna get to work here I'm gonna dig out the remainder of this and then I'm going to lay the gas line and uh, put the tracer wire in so I'll see you guys in all right you guys are back with armchair engineer 85 on a rainy wet day oh man that sucks so this is a project I've been working on now for a while. I just wanted to show everybody. I'm installing a one inch natural gas line. There's my meter um, out to my pool heater. Uh, you can see my pool buildings back there. We were previously running a propane, <clears throat> but I got sick and tired of having to take and take the two 100 pound tanks and run them to Costco and uh, fill them up like every week or every two weeks. and. Um, the price of getting the delivery service with the larger giant tank was very expensive. You didn't get the rate of Costco and you had to pay the delivery fee and the rental fee for the tank. So this is a means to the end. Um, I was advised to dig the trench about uh, 12 to 18 inches. So I went about 15, split the difference. And this was the major hard part right through here between the fence and this cedar hedge. And I'm gonna show you guys the other side. Well, before I do that, here's where I gotta, here's the start of it, where I gotta come up, my first riser, whoop, almost tripped. And uh, here's all the material I have, my one inch, I think it's about 125 feet, my two risers, and my, um, uh, which is tracer wire. All right, I'll show you the other side. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I figured I'd show you the other end here. Um, I've got my down uh, pipe here, uh, just mock up to show you guys. Uh, something I forgot to mention, something that I left out. Um, I was uh, telling you guys in the other video that I was going to do this connection myself, but uh, this bag here also doubles not only as a bag to protect the coupling, but it's also an instruction manual. And if you read the instructions, 
it says that the end of the pipe, so wherever I decide to cut it right here, after I make a flush cut, I have to chamfer uh, the end of the pipe. Now that's not a bevel, uh, that's a chamfer. And to do a chamfer, you need a special tool. So I don't have that tool, and I wanna make sure that I get a, a nice, uh, well, a nice coupling because I don't want this thing to leak over time and I don't want to have to dig it up again. So my gas guy, he has the tool, of course, it's a tool of the trade. So he said, yeah, no problem, he would do it. So unfortunately, I won't be able to show you guys this just because of that simple tool. It's not a very sophisticated tool. It just basically slides on the end of the pipe and then you just turn it to the right and it just uh, chamfers and cuts out the inner diameter of the gas pipe but it's something that you have to do and the tool almost it doubles sorry as a um a guide when you slide it on you make a mark and it tells you you're, it's a depth gauge so that uh you can make a mark and when you make the coupling it'll tell you if you've fully bottomed out if you've went all the way and that you've got a good connection so anyway sorry guys i can't show you that um if i had the tool i would love to do it um but uh, all right, anyways, we're moving forward on this project. All right, here is the final result. It was a bit of a busy day, but we got it in. We've got the riser buried and we got the one inch hard line installed. Uh, we left this cap here in the event that I want to run a, another natural gas one inch hard line uh, if I get a um, natural gas barbecue. But here's this side all buried let's have a look at the other side and the pool side yeah man am i glad this is finished really glad i gotta say it like i said not very hard when you get that chamfering tool to do the splice down here nothing to it just clicks on anybody can do this uh, especially if you have like the pipe already cut to size, that's really handy too. Uh, I forgot to mention on the other side, as well as this side, I'm required, I have to paint this uh, for rust proofing and part of code. So I either paint it uh, like a rust oleum black or silver. But um, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the uh, heater and then I got something to uh, mention to you guys about the heater. All right, here's the heater end of things. You can see the final plumbing down here. I think we did a great job, looks awesome. Um, this is where the video ties into my appliance videos. Uh, the one that I made where, why aren't we fixing these? If we can sm fix small engines and you know we can keep old things l going longer, or we can buy things that are broken and we can fix them, why aren't we doing appliances? Well, this ties into it as well. I bought this in January for $500. Obviously, I bought it off season. And the guy gave me the famous line, well, you know, it ran when it, uh, when it, when it got taken out, um, which, you know, for 500 bucks, I knew what I was getting into. Uh, the biggest problem with these units is the heater core. Uh, they get rotted out if the alkalinity of the water gets too acidic. And to replace one, like brand new, is very expensive. They can run anywhere from a thousand to about fifteen hundred dollars. Um, you know, they're made of copper, expensive metal. So I took it apart, and when I took it apart, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I thought, well, this is a gas appliance, but it was the same mentality of a regular appliance. And they're simple. It's got burners along the bottom that are easily accessible when you remove the door and the tray slides right out. Four bolts tri tr uh, tray slides right out, and it's basically like a barbecue. So I was able to do that, pull the tray out, look at the burners, check to make sure everything was clean, and I was able to vacuum underneath. Um, up top here, like it's, everything's just held together by basic sheet metal screws. Don't mind my dog here. Apparently he, he really likes the job we did too. His name's Norman. Anyways, it's just a bunch of sheet metal screws that's holding this all together. And you can easily access the, um, the heat exchanger. And I was able to do that and look it over and I soaked it in vinegar and uh, I, I was gonna do CLR, but I heated up some vinegar and it did a good job cleaning any of the green off. I was able to check for any cracks or leaks and there was nothing. When I went to the pool place, uh, just to inquire about some questions, they gave me the classic, oh, well, it's seven, eight years old. That's all you're going to get out of these units. Oh, yeah, that's all you're going to get. I mean, this is what they tell people, everybody. 
Like, this is why you got to wake up. These things are not complicated. You watch a few YouTube videos, and if you haven't been a know-how, you know what? You're probably going to end up knowing more than the actual salesperson. They just know numbers. They don't know actually really how these things work. Service guys, yeah, they know how these work, and they know how simple and easy they are. So this all ties in to the appliance video I did. Uh, I wish I would have had my YouTube channel up and running in the winter time because uh, I would have done a complete video on how to tear one of these apart and check it over. If I ever get one for parts, um, just in case anything goes, uh, I'm going to do a video on that. I'm thinking about, here is uh, my uh, pump assembly. I'm thinking about maybe getting one, finding one that's broken uh, and, and doing a video on how to repair one. And then that way I can have one on standby. Uh, this unit here is about three years old, three or four. We had the other one, it went bad on us and kind of left us high and dry. You know, especially in the summertime, that's not good because you don't want the water to sit stagnant. It, in the event that you couldn't get one of these, in the event you couldn't afford one of these, or there's just, you know, money was tight. So I want to get one of these, tear it down, uh, check the pump assembly, check the motor, you know, repair what I have to, and then I could set it right on this ledge right here. Anything goes wrong, boom, boom, boom. I could pull it out, stra strap the new one in, and then I could even rebuild the old one. I think it's just a, a nice thing to have on standby. And, uh, like I said, I also think it'd be a nice thing if I found a parts uh, version of these. I could get the heat exchanger. I could get the burners. I could get the circuit, uh, the, the main board, in case this one ever failed. And it's good to go. Guys, these things will last a long time. And they don't t they're don't. they a lot easier than you think. This is Armchair Engineer. Thank you guys very much for watching. Peace!